Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. With the advent of Query Selector and Query Selector All, there has not been as great a need to use jQuery for simply working with DOM elements. However, one of the nice things about selecting the DOM element with jQuery is that it returns the DOM element as a jQuery object, which allows you to then use other jQuery functions on that object. Query Selector All returns a node list, which is like an array, but it isn't. It is a different type of object. So we are going to look at some tips for working with a node list the results of the query selector all method. Usually you use a loop to move through the results of query selector all. But here is what we're going to look at as another way to work with those results. First off, you convert the node list into an array. Now, by doing that, it then allows you to use all of the array methods to iterate through those items. So there are several array methods that are great to have access to. Many times I prefer using those array methods as opposed to a for loop. Here's some of the methods that might be helpful in working with query selector all results. The for each method, that's the example we're going to look at using for each for doing that. Map, map allows you to take one array and produce another array based upon some criteria which you pass in as a function. And so if you wanted to further filter those results, you could do that with map. You could also do it with filter. So a few functions that might be nice when working with query selector all results. And those are possible as long as you convert that node list into an array. So let's look at how we do that. First off, let me select all the li elements. So I'm going to select the li elements from this page here. So that will be five elements. Here's the web page representing that. And we'll of course do that with query selector all. going to pass in simply the li tag. That's what I'll use as the selector. Then once we have that, let me just do a console.log the length. So a node list is not an array, but it does have a length property. So we can see how many items we have selected. Then I'm going to do one thing to show that it is not an array. I'm going to use the pop method on that list. So the pop method of arrays allows you to pop off the last element in that array and do something with it. So let's see how that works. I'm going to refresh, let's just open the console. We get a length of five, so it selected five total elements and then notice we get an error. Li pop is not a function. So it doesn't recognize the pop method because the node list is not an array. It is array like, but it is not an array. So we don't have access to all of the methods that are available with arrays. And that's what we want to do. We want to get access to those. So the first trick is to convert the node list to an array. And to do that, we use the slice method on an array. Now what does slice do? Slice basically returns a portion of the array which you're acting on and it returns it as a new array. Well, something interesting about slice, if you don't pass in any arguments, it returns the entire array. Now I just said that we can't use array methods on this node list. We're not able to do that. So how are we going to use slice on this to turn it into an array? Well, here is the trick. Let me enter this in, then I'll describe it. All right, now first notice that I did not use the slice method directly on the node list, which is contained in li. I did not do li.slice. 
the way I was able to access a slice method is by accessing the array object in JavaScript, accessing its prototype. That is where all of the array methods reside, is on the prototype of arrays. That's how we're able to access all of those methods for every array, is it exists on the prototype. And so I go to the prototype, and then I can access the slice method. However, how do I get it to act on the data that's in the node list, that's in LI? Well, I do that with call. Call will invoke this method indirectly. So I don't have to use li.slice to invoke that method. I can invoke it indirectly using call. And then I have it act on the node list by passing that in. And so that will turn the li node list into an array and we'll place it inside the li underscore array variable. So just so we see that that works properly, I'm going to do li array.pop. We'll see if pop works on that. Let me comment out that one so it doesn't prevent us from continuing on with the error. Save that, refresh, and now let's look at li array. And notice there are four items. So one of the items was popped off using the pop method of arrays. And so that worked for us. That allowed us to turn that into an array. Now that it's an array, we can use the for each method to do something to each of those elements. So what I'd like to do is something pretty simple. I'm just going to add a new class to each element. It's simply a red text class. So it'll change the text to red. That's all I'm going to do. Nothing too fancy, but it'll show you how we can use for each. Now, the way for each works is that you pass in a function. And that function is used on every element in the array. So basically what for each does is it goes through all the elements in an array and it invokes the function that you pass on onto each of those elements. And here's how it does it. So I'm going to pass in a function. Now as the argument for that function, I'm going to indicate a val or value. So for each will automatically pass in the element from the array as the first argument to that function. So in my function, I need an argument to accept that. And that's what val will be. Then I can work on that dom element. I'm going to use class list and I'm simply going to add another class to it. And the class I'm going to add is red text. So once again, for each, we'll go through all five elements, if all five are there. And I'll comment this out so all five will be there. It'll go through all five elements. Each time it iterates through one of those, it will pass it in to this variable. And then we act on that by accessing the class list and adding a new class to it. And that's going to change the text red because I have a define this class in my CSS right up here. All right. See, while I'm in CSS, I'm going to comment out visibility equals none so that when I refresh my HTML page, the bullet items will all show up so that we can see how this will change it. All right, we've got that ready. Let me save JavaScript file and I'm going to close the console and then I'm going to refresh. And now they're all in red. So two tips basically. One tip is converting it into an array. The other tip is accessing the methods that are now available to iterate through that node list as if it were an array and I happen to use for each. There are other methods that could be used. They're a part of arrays that might be beneficial as well. In this tutorial, I've mentioned a few topics which you may want to explore further. For example, mention the prototype also mentioned a couple 
of array methods for each filter map. And there are others as well. I have created tutorials on those topics and I'll include a link in the description section of this tutorial. You can also visit our, our website allthingsjavascript.com where there is a complete list of all the tutorials we publish. If you found this video helpful, go ahead and give it a like. If you'd like to further add to your JavaScript skills, you can do one of the following. Click the video link in the center to access another tutorial right away. Click the circle link to the left to subscribe to our channel. I release new tutorials each week. And to visit our website for a full list of our tutorials, click the link on the right. Thanks for watching.